and good afternoon international Basel fans. Welcome to the 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup. We're live here at the Araneta Coliseum and right now we're going to enjoy the local entertainment. Well, when you win, you win for all here at the 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup. Well, hello, everybody. We're in for a showdown tonight, the final group game for these two teams of South Sudan and Serbia. I am your commentator, Josh Ben, alongside head coach of the Austin Spurs of the NBA G League, Will Boyd. Coach, this looks like it's going to be a one-sided event, but again, many people underestimating how good South Sudan can be. Yeah, no question. Uh, two very high-powered offenses going head-to-head. -head. Serbia in the top three in points per game, assists, and field goal percentage. But don't forget South Sudan. So they're actually leading this World Cup so far in three-point field goal percentage. And, of course, both these teams in the top three in fast break points. So buckle up. Both teams are going to get up and down. Should be a great game. Also, heavy talent in this team featuring the Basel Champions League, the Euro League, and the NBA, as we've just seen. Well, coming out there, Stefan Jovic, currently a member of Casa Demon, Zaragoza, and not to mention the likes of Dejan Davidovac, of one of the greatest teams in Serbian basketball, sort of Venezuela. So, so much tradition and history that comes to this beautiful country. Yeah, all these players uh, playing at such a high level, and obviously, there's so much tradition behind Serbian basketball. A lot to play for when representing their country. Well, there is the big man, Nikola Milutinov, plays for Olympiakos. Stands at 213 centimeters. He is going to have to be a driving force this game. Remember, Serbia win this game, and they'll sweep Group B, as did the Dominican Republic in Group A. Well, Boggy's shooting was pretty good in the last game. He's going to need to continue the excellence. But now, let's get set to introduce the South Sudanese players, a team that you have close ties with. Yeah, you know, I was fortunate enough to coach Royal Ivy in uh, college at University of Texas. Fortune Solomon, the assistant behind him, uh, was with us at the Bakersfield Jam. And all these guys have, of course, the Blair Academy connection. So private school located in New Jersey, Joe Mantagna, the head coach there, and uh, Luol Deng, also a teammate of Royal Ivy's there. And let's not forget, they've brought Mariel Shayak, who also was a player there. So this is a real family affair and how they do things. Well, interesting that your close relationship, because Basel fans may not know my relationship, Luol Deng being the greatest British Basel player of all time, Steve Vitt, his general manager, a player I used to look up to, but also when I was a student at the American School of England, the assistant coach, Adju Dang, was playing for what is now Surrey Scorchers. Back then, Gilbert Heath, I would see Adju Dang every day. So everybody all over the world has close ties to South Sudan. Well, you know, I think they've kind of become the you know, the global team. So everybody's second favorite team, right? You want to you want to root for them. It's a story that's uh, very impressive. Where they've come from in just the last two years is incredible. And we'll have to see if their journey continues here at the World Cup. Well, they're going to have to stop that man there. Boggy Bogdanovich plays for the Atlanta Hawks, averaging 14 points per game last season in the NBA. 
And now we're going to bring out our local heroes who will stand with both the players of South Sudan and for Serbia. Well, the other game taking part later today is China against Puerto Rico. Now, if China defeat Puerto Rico, that will be the case for South Sudan. They will, more or less, it wouldn't, wouldn't matter what happened in this game. But, you know, the way Puerto Rico are playing, you would expect them to have a comfortable victory against China. And, you know, of course, South Sudan wants to take care of, of what they have control over. So you, you'd hate to lose this game, have to sit back, hope for a big upset there from China. Well, Bogdan Bogdanovic and his teammates now will both stand for the national anthems of South Sudan and Serbia. This party about to get started now. Players shaking hands, paying homage to each other. But it's only right that now we introduce our three referees for tonight's game. We're very proud to say that we have some of the finest officials here in World Basketball. They've done an excellent job at all of our competitions, and they'll continue to do so here tonight for the final group game between South Sudan and Serbia. We have Karim Baki, Johan Rosso, and Raba Nujaim from Lebanon, Turkey, and France. Well, again, this game is going to be a very interesting one because, as we mentioned, the experts all going with Serbia. I mean, everybody is predicted this is going to be a Serbia victory through and through, but don't count South Sudan out because this team, a lot of these players, well, let's go to Coach Pasic first. You know, a champion in 2002 with a former Yugoslavia. You know, he'll be looking for a big, big response from his players as they go with this starting five of Jovic, Balutinov, Dobric, Bogdanovic, and Nikola Jovic. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see who they match up with on Karlik Jones. My guess, Dobrich probably getting that assignment, and he'll have his hands full there. Bogdan Bogdanovich, we mentioned, playing for the Atlanta Hawks so far here at the 2023 FIBA World Cup, averaging 15.5 points per game, along with just under five rebounds. You know, if Serbia have a good perimeter shooting night, it could be a very tough game for South Sudan. Well, no question about that. And, and you know, Bogdanovich really hasn't been to the form we're used to seeing from him. Just four for 14 from three-point line so far. 
there is the big man from Miami Heat. Well, I say big man, he actually plays the job, but you know, the great Nikola Jovic, many regarded as the future face of Serbian basketball, came from Mega Baskets, the same academy that developed Nikola Jokic as well, the Joker. You know, it was a great game. He started with three consecutive three-pointers in the first quarter, but Coach Besic, understanding they had a 30-point lead against Puerto Rico, and Puerto Rico got it back down to 10. I mean, they, they're not invincible, that's one thing. Well, if South Sudan can continue to shoot at the uh, clip they've been doing, they're certainly not out of it. You know, Serbia looking as good as anybody in this World Cup so far, offensively just been overpowering their opponents. But South Sudan has some firepower as well. Well, there you saw that naturalized player, Carlick Jones, head coach, Royal Ivy, one of your former players. You know, he seems very relaxed coming into this game. He's confident, but you know, there's no, there's no pressure on them. There's no expectations. Could that be a positive benefactor? Well, they've been shocking people for the last two years, so I think that's a role that they've gotten used to and in some ways embraced. They know it'd be a big upset, but uh, they feel confident about their chances. Mariel Shayak, Wenya Gabriel, who played last season with the LA Lakers, Kwani Kwani, Carling Jones, and Nudi Ahmad will be in the starting lineup. Ahmad spending last season playing in the P League for Tai Chung in Chinese Taipei, but you know, this guy, whenever you need something, you go to the certified walking bucket. Carlick, Dr. Jones, he's been great so far. Yeah, Carlick's been tremendous in the top three, both in scoring and assists. They put the ball in his hands a lot, and he's really delivered for them. And of course, you absolutely love coaching against him in the G League, right? <laughs> he's a difficult cover for anybody. We've seen it on display here at the World Cup. Well, Mario Shayok currently playing in the G League as well. For a team that used to be known as the main Red Claws, but now finally rebranded as the main Celtics. Currently playing in South Portland up in the state of Maine. You know, against China, 13 points, but yeah, he is as tough as they come. Yeah, Shyak's been really solid for them, also playing those backup point guard minutes when Carly Jones has come out of the game. Well, Royal Ivy, two minutes and 30 seconds until we get things on the way. But, you know, what do South Sudan, apart from the perimeter shooting, what's one way defensively they're going to have to try and stop Serbia? Well, you know, that man right there, uh, they need to continue to keep him in his shooting slump. That's the difficulty of defending Serbia and why they've been running through everybody offensively. They have so many weapons. They do such a good job of moving the ball, moving players within their motion offense. Well, you can just imagine the whole social media platforms, news across the world, if South Sudan were to do, you know, more or less, which is Mission Impossible, defeat one of the sixth ranked best team in the world. The FIBA World Rankings brought by Nike Serbia in the top 10, of course. But, you know, anything is possible here in international, in international basketball. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, as you see some of these offensive numbers there. But for South Sudan, they've got to limit the easy baskets. So a lot of those points coming in transition, uh, ranked second in the World Cup so far in fast break points, and also first in steals created. So South Sudan has to be really strong with the ball, make sure they're getting quality shots, not giving Serbia any opportunities to get out and run. Well, momentarily, we're going to listen to what both coaches have to say in the final buildup. 15 three points versus China, joint African record in the FIBA World Cup. That just goes to show how well this team likes to shoot. Let's go and listen now to Coach Royal Ivy. This is you. Nooney, this is you. Mario, you handle the ball. Nooney, I want you to go. Well, wow, Coach Royal Ivy is talking. Our official sponsor, the Tissot Countdown to Tip Off, is underway. A big shout out to Tissot for all the work and the collaborations with FIBA. But again, final words being said by Coach of South Sudan, Royal Ivy. And you see Luol Dang there. Coach Ivy. Uh, you know, making a point of recognizing all the hard work that he has done in building this basketball team really from nothing. An incredible story, and you know, I know something near and dear to Luol's heart. Bogdan Bogdanovic coming out here for the Serbians. Again, they like to call him Mr. Troika, the ability to shoot the three-pointer back in Serbia. That's a great years in the EuroLeague playing for Fenerbahce, probably one of the greatest EuroLeague teams of all time. And made his embark with the Sacramento Kings under the leadership of Vlade Divac. Angel Stojakovic also was working for the Kings. And, you know, there was a Serbian bond there, but then eventually they decided that Bog Dan Bogdanovic, it was time for him to move on and have his own role with the Atlanta Hawks. And, you know, for, for the most part, I considered him a good role player because he's a great shooter. But, you know, 
you're not taking that. You're saying that he is a proven scorer in the NBA, which is a fair assessment as well. Oh, no question. Uh, I mean, he's a legitimate shooting guard in the NBA. Uh, one of the best catch and shoot players uh, that they have in that league. And, and you see courtside, you've got uh, Coach Mike Gray and former player Epe Udo, who's now part of that staff. So they've sent people here to observe him. And it shows you how important he is to that organization. Well, to all of our fans in Serbia, Zdravo Kakuse, and to all of our fans in South Sudan, all over the world, welcome to the 2023 FIBA Barca World Cup. Let's get it underway. Serbia winning the tip off. Lovic in the backcourt. Playing the three out here with Bogdanovic. Find Nikola Jovic. Oh, Winyan Gabriel's going to get called for the foul. This is interesting now because many people are now going to see what it's like for a you know, a steady NBA player, Wenya Gabriel, who is currently a free agent, match up with one of the best EuroLeague centers. Well, that's a great set there to start the game. Milutinov uh, able to seal Gabriel on that high-low, uh, trying to use some of that pressure against against South Sudan. Well, trying to get things going now. Bogdanovich coming up on ball screen, finds Milutinov. Goes up and draws a contact. He'll go to the free throw line. Three point play. Excellent execution there between Bogdanovich and Nikola Milutinov. Yeah, great finish there. You can see uh, South Sudan trying to be aggressive with some of their pick and roll coverages. They need that weak side help to be more pulled in there. Make them find that weak side diagonal skip rather than Milutinov on the roll. South Sudan fans trying to put off. Moves up, missed the free throw. Amon gets a rebound. Well, it's going to be interesting to see with Shayak in the backcourt, guarded by Dobrich. Trying to place for Segura Fedo, Virtus Bologna. Trying to go back to a colleague Jones, but Jovic easily reads that one. Jovic looking to go all the way. Kicks out, finds Boggy. Wide open on the perimeter. Three is up. Three is good from Bogdanovic. And South Sudan really is going to have to take care of the ball. That's where Serbia is so dangerous, out in transition. Great kick out there to find Bogdanovic for the three. Jones coming off the ball screen, trying to find Gabriel. Amon, he'll try three in the corner. He'll try the three. The three is up, and a good response there from Nuni Amon. Yeah, big shot there. Try to settle the group down. South Sudan have to play with confidence. Bogdanovic killing the screen. Well, Jovic made a three in the first quarter against Puerto Rico and again gets his first Troika. Yeah, if he can make those shots, he's such a tough cover with his athleticism, ability to put it on the deck. Gabriel trying to attack here. Kicks out to Nudia Amat. Amat now almost turning it over. Good recovery by Kalik Jones. Jones going all the way, showing no fear. And that's around Nikola Milutinov. Good take there from Jones. You already see the early pace of this game. Both teams wanting to get up and down and can score it with the best of them. So I'm getting the tempo but between these two teams. Bogdanovich kick it out. Dobbert, he's wide open. He'll fire another three. He can't get this one. Shayak able to secure the rebound, but again, Serbi come up with it. Boggy down the middle. Boggy going up uncontested. Sounds like that, as you mentioned, not taking care of the basketball and the rebounds. Yeah, they've really got to be solid there, finish off their possessions. Well, Wenyan Gabriel, strong move, and that's what he has to do. South Sudan, if they can get more access in the open court, I mean, athletically, he is going to defeat Nikola Malutov every single play. And it's going to be tricky. South Sudan wants to play fast, but you kind of have to feel your way through it. Every shot and possession is so important against the Serbian team. Well, he knows. He, Svetislav Pesic, the head coach of Serbia, Many years he's seen great opponents. Well, at that time, Yugoslav, the former Yugoslav, had broken down into the what was then Serbia Montenegro. They went to the 2004 Olympics in Athens, and you know they underachieved, and it was kind of a dry, barren spell for Serbian basketball. And now he's back in the realm where you know the expectations are very, very high. Well, they're always going to be high with Serbia. You know, with this group, maybe not quite as much pressure as before. And you see them playing as a team. Their chemistry seems really great so far in this World Cup. That's good defense by South Sudan. Now, can they push this one? Amal made one three from there, but being closed out by Nikola Jovic. 
Three points of difference between South Sudan and Serbia. Wenyan Gabriel bumps in the lane, gets rejected. Well, Nikola Milutinov just said, not in my house. Yeah, Milutinov so solid back there. That's something that this South Sudan team is going to have to adjust to. Not easy finishes when you have him controlling the rim like that. That's good rim protection by the big man from Olympiakos. Conley Jones was wide open under the basket, but again, it's a costly turnover there for South Sudan. And those are the turnovers we talked about. They cannot afford to commit those turnovers. Yeah, they really have to be strong with the ball, make sure that they're getting quality shots on every possession. Jovic getting the crossover. Nice penetration. There's a little dump down. Tan drop oh, yeah. is good in the lane. Serbia dissecting down the South Sudanese defense. Conley Jones getting a handoff. Another kick out, finds Kwani, Kwani, the pump fake. He'll try a little one-legged run, but again, doesn't get the run on it. But you know, appreciate that there from Shayat going in for an offensive rebound. Well, and that might be one of the advantages that they have. So much athleticism on that perimeter, the wings being able to crash, maybe create some extra possessions for them. Five-point lead to the Serbians. So far, business as usual, moving the ball so well. Robert's getting a handoff, finds an opening. Kicks out, Bogdanovic is wide open. Oh, Bogdanovic trying to be very unselfish there, but had the three-pointer. Yeah, Minutinov not, not expecting that pass there. And in this case, Serbia just a little too unselfish. Well, it was a good closeout by Kalik Jones, but Serbia needs to push the tempo as much as possible. Jones looking for an opening. Kwani Kwani tries a three. He'll put it up and he'll fire it. And make that the second trail of the game here for South Sudan. Jovic going in and around the defense. Jovic again. It's way too easy there by Stefan Jovic. Yeah, and they call that the Gore Tot screen there. Able to seal off the big from the rim on the drop coverage. Well, the three pointer was wide open, but nobody crashing the ball to that point. Four point lead to Serbia. Jovic trying to go to that sequence again here with Malutinov. Nikola Jovic, look out below again, hangs in the air, and he lays that one off the backboard. Yeah, and they're getting uh, South Sudan in rotation here with their pick and roll coverages. Be interesting to see if they might want to go to some switching, try to stay more solid man-to-man. -man. Of course, it presents some post -mis mismatches, but right now, Serbia kind of having their way on offense. Well, let's go and listen now to head coach Royal Ivy at the moment. His team, two three-pointers here in the early four minutes of this game. Let's go and listen now to what he has to say. You got to stay with your man. They're slipping out. They're slipping out. On this next play, let's re run Seattle C to stop. Seattle C to stop. You got to talk. Uh, I want to. Uh, Wani, Wani, you in the curl. Seattle C to stop. Well, Serbia shooting from inside the rainbow. They haven't missed a shot, Coach. Yeah, they've, uh, they've certainly come out firing. We heard Coach Ivy in that timeout talking about their guard slipping out. Part of their motion offense, they do get a lot of guard-to-guard -guard action. All the Serbian players so well-versed in changing pace on their cuts, looking for each other. Well, that was Bogdanovic off a back point. You call the loose ball that South Sudan should have taken care of, and the Serbian fans really enjoying the occasion here tonight. Boggy so far, five points. One three-pointer and one layup, as you saw in the last highlight. So the fans of both these two teams really enjoying the occasion, embracing the culture of FIBA World Basketball Cup culture, if you like. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, both fans very spirited. Great to see the South Sudanese fans travel like this. And what a story for them to rally around. We heard Coach Ivy in that timeout talk about Seattle into stack action, so expect some uh, Spanish pick and roll at the end of this play. Well, Shyok still fighting for it. Gabriel is going to go all the way with a reverse slam. He gets something out of nothing there for South Sudan. Yeah, sometimes better to be lucky than good. Came up with the uh, loose ball there and finished that the layup. So he still lead by four points. Take a pop hit. Oh my God, Nikola Jovic. Now we're in the 
10 here on the shot clock. Dubbridge has got to get something going. Looks like a tough contested three point. I can't get it. South Sudan came up with a rebound. Shahak trying to take on now. Bumps in the lane. Goes up with it. And the man who plays for the main Celtics taking on the superstar for the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah, great take there from Shahak to absorb the contact. Dobrich now 0 for 10 from 3 in this World Cup. And he has struggled significantly, but you know, there's plenty of time. Malutinov trying to take on Gabriel. Good defense by Gabriel. Bolani trying to be physical here. Jovic hand his face. Tough one. And again, South Sudan playing with a spirited defense. But can they tie the game up? Well, Jones, so far the one field goal he had was attacking the Serbian defense. Find Shyok to give him the lead. Three is up, and that's going to be too short. Mediamont almost got the rebound. And that's going to remain South Sudan ball coach. Yeah, really nice response coming out of that timeout. Defensively much more solid. A lot less rotation from them. They've gone to some drop coverages instead of the aggressive hedging, which had them in rotation. Well, Maluach coming into the game here for South Sudan, as is Majok as well. So this is going to be a interesting change here for the South Sudanese players. Well, bringing in the youngest player at this tournament, and Maluach, the talented 16-year-old, getting in valuable minutes here. Jones pump fakes. Trying to go baseline. Well, Maluach was there. Still comes up with it. Almost time to game up. Can't get it. So we now chance to restore a bit of order. Pulls up towards the block of Malutinov. One thing Serbia's got to make sure they do is they don't underestimate the hunger of this South Sudanese team as Malutinov just ta taking a nice post move. Malawetch coming off one screen. Jones looking for a handoff. Rudy Mott's made one three. Can he get another one? This one's up. No good. Offensive board again for South Stat. The throwdown. That's exactly what they need there. Second chance points. Yeah, and I think they have an advantage there with those long athletic wings looking to crash from the perimeter. Roberts going baseline. Another kick out. Good passing. Govic made one three. Makes another one. And that's just lethal stealth basketball by the Serbians. That's where they're so good. If they get you in rotation, they keep the ball moving, quick decisions, and find the shooter. Well, NBA superstars, EuroLeague superstars, basketball Champions League superstars. Jones looking to attack, bumps in the lane. Doesn't get the ab one, but he'll go to the free throw line here for two shots. Yeah, South Sedan playing out of that Spanish pick and roll set quite a bit. Able to get Carly Jones downhill there. Well, there's a follow-up to dunk there by Deng. Again, second chances could be the key factor in this game. Jones now at the free throw line. Well, for those who are unfamiliar with the NBA G League, let's just, how do we explain how great this guy is? Well, you know, the MVP of the league, uh, you're seeing it on display here, you know, top three and not only scoring, but assists. Uh, South Sudan will put the ball in his hands quite a bit. Obviously, Serbia really coming into this game with a focus of trying to make him a distributor, aggressive pick and roll coverages from them to start out. Well, I think we might have a, a legal entry lane violation here against the Serbian. So another free throw coming up for Colin Jones. Johnson cut Puerto this down. You know, it's interesting. Both China and Puerto Rico, the first quarter, I mean, it was done and dusted at that point. South Sudan, they're hanging in there. No, they've done a great job continuing to play with confidence. Uh, this is this is their M.O. Alouachi offensive board. Now it's a three-point play. Nikola Jovic just getting bullied there on the box out. Yeah, the 16-year-old showing his length and size there on the big offensive rebound and put back. Trying to go for the penetration. Jovic maybe getting away with a travel. So he needs something from this play. Well, good defense. Well, they're going to call a foul. That's actually the right call there by the referee because you can clearly see Peter Jock just holding on to the arms. Serbia's number 23, Marko Guterich. Yeah, Jock needs the discipline there. Shot clock winding down. About to finish off a, a great defensive possession for him. Just bails them out there with a silly foul. 
They're going to get a fresh 14 on the shot clock with 2.40 to go here in the first quarter. Jovic guided by Nunez Mott. Bogdanovic trying to go around the screen, looks for Milutinov, and again, a beautiful play, and a kill of Milutinov. Well, Coach Pesic wants to have one. And I think South Sudan is, it really needs to be in a deep drop or switch. They've had a hard time anytime their bigs were up in pick and roll coverages. Well, they're going to turn this over, and again, Bogdanovic behind the back pass. Again, it's a beautiful showtime Serbian basketball. The dime coming from Boggy. It's a six-point ball game. Malawash looking for a handoff, finds Jones. Jones down the middle, pulls up in the mid-range, takes a tough one, can't get it. Serbia survived this one. Goodrich trying to find Malutinov. Malutinov in the lane. Again, the big man simply too big, too strong, and just too unstoppable. Yeah, once again, Minotinov able to seal early and get deep position. The young fella, Moroc, needs to figure out how to keep him out of the paint. Well, Mock gets fouled. The foul is going to be against Nikola Jovic. So Nudy Mop will be going to the free throw line for two shots. Well, look at the dime time coming from Boggy, finding Nikola Malutinov. But again, I like the pass that Buggy game in transition to behind the back pass. I mean, that is right there. That is showtime. Koshaku Subsku. You got to love the play of these Serbian players. Yeah, and you saw in that previous highlight when the bigs for South Sudan have been out and aggressive in their pick and roll coverages, the Serbian guards have been able to find the bigs on these rolls, and that's put them into a lot of rotation. So I think the adjustment for them is either to get into a deeper drop where they don't have to pull in that perimeter quite as much, or just go ahead and start switching it. But Serbia just too good at finding the open men, making you rotate defensively. Well, makes the first free throw. David Dovac checking into the game for Serbia. 129 to go. Nunia Mark can't make this a six point deficit. Oh, Missed another free throw. Hanalat trying to fight for offensive boards. Putting on the hustle. Gunaric won the foul there, caught against Malawac. Yeah, good effort there from Malawac. Almost coming up with offensive rebound. Seemingly next to every rebound so far. Great job of staying active on the offensive rebounds. Sunday Dench will have to play point guard duties here with Kwani Kwani. Carly Jones currently on the bench for South Sudan. Bongi looking to kick this one out. Avoids the block there, but good defense by Malawach. But again, the recovery. Bongi kicking out, finding Marinkovic. He'll try a three point. Three is up, no good. South Sudan survived this one. Under a minute to go. Can they chip into the seven point deficit? Kwani, nowhere to go here. Find Sunday Detch. South Sudan, some desperation. Six seconds here. There's another kick out. Three is up in the corner. It's going to be way too short. And without Carly Jones on the floor, clearly you can see South Sudan struggling. Marikovic tries another deep three in the corner. That's an offensive rebound. Foggy left wide open. He'll try another three and again. He punishes South Sudan. Now it's a 10 point ball game. Yeah, South Sudan uh, trying to weather the storm here with Carly Jones on the bench. Need to get a quality shot here to finish the quarter. Dash being heavily defended. Trying to find an opening. Finds Dang in the lane. No foul court against Dusan Ristic. And that's the end of the first quarter. Quite clearly, you can see the rest. Carly Jones really does inhibit the offense of South Sudan. Yeah, tough, tough for them to operate with him off the floor. Serbia is so good defensively. You saw in that last possession, a great corner peel. That corner defender sliding over to take the ball. Uh, just really no answers for South Sudan over that final two minutes of that quarter. Let's go and listen now to what the coaches have to say before we look at the top plays.
Well, here are some of the top plays here of the first quarter. Malutinov really having a fill day at the moment here for the Serbians. Nikola Jovic leading the scorers with 10 points. I mean, you see the penetration. Bogdanovic, three in the corner. You know, it, it's interesting because you got a decision to make here if you're Coach Royal Ivy. How long do you keep Carly Jones out for rest? Uh, well, I'd be surprised if they started this quarter with him still on the bench. Obviously, you saw the little run Serbia was able to go on when he's out. Uh, you know, Serbia, obviously the offense high-powered, but defensively, they're so physical and tough. It's, it's very difficult to get into any kind of uh, sets. So they need that experience of Carly Jones there. Well, that was the behind-the-back pass coming from Boggy Van Nikola Jovic, the showtime you saw in transition. Well. Apparently, basketballs, as we've seen here at the FIBA World Cup, are being more than just used for playing games. That's no. <laughs> he, need he needs to find the Puerto Rican fan. Those two need to get together. <laughs> well, use that QR code to get courtside 1891. Get the best stream schedules and scores that matter to you most. Download that app using that QR code. Courtside 1891. Well, yeah, they're coming back on the floor without Carlick, Carlick Jones, so it's interesting. How about well, what when you Gabriel back in the game? Well, uh, Coach Ivy just trying to steal whatever little rest he can get for him. I wouldn't expect him to be on that bench for long. Well, Serbia coming back on the floor with Guterich, Marikovic, Bogdanovic, Davidovac, and Dusan Ristic. Well, this might be a good passage here for South Sudan because the one player they seem to cannot defend, apart from Nikola Jovic, is Nikola Malutinov. Yeah, Malutinov doing a great job. A lot of deep seals, finding short rolls out of their pick and roll coverage. Well, slight delay in game now. The officials just trying to sort something out with a shot clock. Sunday coming off one ball screen. Finds Peter Jock. He'll fire a three. And a much here three points there for South Sudan. Cutting it down a seven point ball game. Yeah, good execution there to start the corner. Going back to that Spanish pick and roll. And Peter Jock's definitely going to knock that down when he gets the look. The one thing they need to prevent here is the Serbian perimeter excellence. Bogdanovic cross court finding Davidovac. Guterich. Penetrates, hangs up in the air, and again, double clutches. But no problem there for Guterich. Yeah, really nice take from Guterich. Normally uh, stronger going to his left, able to put it on the deck going right there. Gabriel looking to attack now against Dusan Ristich. Goes in for a reverse layup. Well, Kickball violations, and that's going to go back to Serbia. And I don't think Luol Dang and Royal Ivy agree with that call. I mean, it did come off the foot of Wenya Gabriel. Yeah, I think that's definitely the right call. Just a little frustration of how things have been going so far in this game. And interesting to note, Bogdanovich still on the floor, played the entire first quarter. Coach Pesic realizing the importance of him for this team. David Dovats, Dutch defended Bogdanovich. Good reach now, trying to put the ball on the floor. Trying to go to his left. Cross in the corner, Marikovic, he'll put up the three-pointer. Can't get it. Serbia fighting for offensive boards, but South Sudan, I mean, that's good better defense by the South Sudanese players. Yeah, good job of just being solid. I think the big thing for them in the half court is making sure they stay out of rotation, try to keep guys in front of them, and hope that Serbia will miss some of these threes. Dutch being got it here by Marikovic. Well, nice dump down to Wenya Gabriel. Kicks out to Kwani. Kwani's made one three, makes another one. Well, he wants the yeah, out one there. Now it's back to a six point bowl game. And a timeout now by Coach Pesic. Well, the man who plays in Croatia, 
speaking with some of his teammates back in the Abba League now, understanding the importance of this game and playing against the great Serbia. But right now, South Sudan, they're not going away anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, great response there coming out of the quarter, doing it with Carly Jones on the bench, continuing to play with confidence. That's been their way for the past two years, so nothing really phasing them. We'll continue to get those threes up whenever they can. Yo, neither you and I can really speak Serbian that well. I mean, I am studying, but I'm still trying to learn how to count from 1 to 10. But what do you think Coach Pashic would have been saying in that timeout? Well, you know, interesting, you hear the play call at the end of their chess pin down. So even though they're speaking Serbian at the end of the day, the play calls are in English, so expect some kind of downstream, I would assume maybe for Bogdanovich to come off when they get their possession. Uh, but I'm sure he's disappointed with the driving kicks they've been giving up. Uh, knowing South Sudan wants to shoot threes, probably wants to see them do a better job of, of getting them off the three-point line. So be holding on to a six-point lead. Yeah, led by as many as ten. The previous opponents at this stage, both China and Puerto Rico, are almost down, we're down by 30 points at this point. Goodrich making a contact, Wendy and Gabriel not allowing anything at that point. So it will be a baseline ball here to Serbia. Second personal foul on Kuani Kuani, but only the first team foul here in the second quarter. Jovic, top scorer for Serbia in the last game. Guterich got it by Kwani Kwani. Tries to go for the step back. Bogdanovich pump face. Goes up. Can't get it. Oh, great defense by South Sudan. Sunday Detch now trying to take on Ristich. Draws another foul. He'll go back to the free throw line. Well, he's been relatively quiet offensively in his first two games on Sunday. This is a good game for him to really, you know, prove himself for a future NBA team. Yeah, no question about that. I'm sure Ristich a little frustrated. You do see him extend the arm at the end of that. Uh, you know, the physicality of Serbia versus the athleticism of South Sudan. So it'll be interesting to see if Gabriel's able to use some of that quickness to go by these bigs. Substitutions back in the game. Nudia Martin, Carly Jones, Shayak also back in the backcourt. Wendy Gabriel missing the first free throw. A lot of talk about this young man when he played for the LA Lakers last season. Almost becoming a highlight for any South Sudanese player that makes it to the Basketball Champions League, the EuroLeague, internationally, the Basketball African League for that matter as well. Another great upcoming league that you know you've worked in very well as well. Yeah fortunate to be a part of that uh, you know it's such a huge huge project the NBA has put together on the continent I think we're gonna see a lot of players coming out of that moving forward well Guterich just getting the step there we will go to the free throw line foul is gonna be pulled against Wenya Gabriel well, that's his second personal foul of the game I believe yeah, it looks like Coach Ivy is going to stick with him here. Well, Goodrich, we talked about this in the last game. You know, the last time you were coaching at a FIBA World Cup was in 2019. He very much had a role player position when he was playing against, you know, well, alongside the likes of Nikola Jokic, you know, Stefan Jovic as well, Bogdanovic. But now it's interesting. Still coming off the bench, but, you know, it does have a primary scoring role with this team. Well, Gudrich, uh, you know, really solid player, strong athletic left hand uh, wing. And that just shows you the depth that Serbia has. I mean, they can come with anybody off that bench, and that's going to be a high level player that can contribute in some way. Back to an eight point ball game. Jones coming off the ball screen, finding Gabriel. Gabriel looking to isolate. Again, it's another turnover. 
kick it out, find Bogdanovich. Boggy in the corner, three is up, and again, they just punish South Sudan. Well, Gabriel's got to stop turning the ball over. That's one thing, if they're going to win this game, he's got to take care of the rock. Well, they have to value every possession. You know, the turnovers are going to lead to transition opportunities, and Serbia is just so good in the open court. So I'm not sure Gabriel, you know, isolating at the elbow is really the offense that South Sudan wants to see. Well, let's listen now to Coach Royale Ivy. I know you got a drive, you made a finish, but relax. Hey! At the end of the day, bro, this shit is basketball. Basketball, one through four. Listen, one through four is a switch. One through four is a switch, you get it? Listen, we all right, we all right. They made it three, we're down 11. Let's get a shot right here. Let's run Seattle, see the stack, see? For Peter right now. Horn, Horn Small's been good. The slip out's there. The, they putting two on the ball. We all right, man. We got to talk it out. Stay with the game. Stay with the game. They went on a run. Let's get three stops in a row and close out this corner. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Defense at three. One, two, three. Defense. Well, you can see that Royal Ivy just calling for a bit of composure and patience from his team. But as you mentioned, you know, Wayne and Gabriel, fantastic player, but they can't afford, you know, him to have that isolation role, as you said, just before that timeout. Yeah, you know, it's it's a fine line. South Sudan's a team that wants to play loose and free, want to get up and down, but when you're playing against the likes of Serbia, you really have to be disciplined in the shots that you take. Any bad shot or turnover is going to lead to runouts for them. You heard Coach Ivy there going back to the Seattle set that they liked, finishing off in Spanish pick and roll. It'll be Peter Jock coming off this time, looking for a top of the key three. Gabriel bring the ball up here for South Sudan. Trailing by 11 points. Jones here in the backcourt, trying to go for a ball screen. Cross court, find a shy up. Got to make this one wide open. Three is up, three is good. Well, you can definitely count on the perimeter shooting of this South Sudanese team. And that's a great find from Carly Jones. Weak side help pulled all the way into the paint. He makes the right look to the corner three. Fifth three-point field goal so far here for South Sudan. Find a wristage. Oh, great defense by Winyan Gabriel, not committing the foul. Shock now, look at the push. Finding Jones. Jones pump fakes, baseline. Almost turning it over. A foul is going to be committed by David Dovats. And Gooderich infuriated with the decision, but you know, that's the right call to my mind. It's an aggressive double team. You can't push the guy out of bounds. Yeah, Peter Jacques in some big trouble there, but you see the hand really unnecessary from Gooderich. <laughs> it's the argument with the referee after. It's like you push the guy over. Yeah, I think he's you know, frustrated as well. They had him in, in big trouble there in that dead corner. Well, when you Gabriel fires a three-pointer. Well, that's the kind of shot, you know, when you're trying to build some momentum, it's not the right shot you want. Yeah, again, you know, that balance of loose and free, but execution, I think Gabriel has to understand what his role is on this team. Well, he's a fantastic player, Winnie Gabriel, but they need his leadership, his experience. And Serbia using uh, their own version of Spanish pick and roll there, catching the big on that back pick for an easy layup. Marikovic trying to defend Kali Jones. Again, Kali Jones, Marikovic, you appreciate the full court pressure, but you know full well Kali Jones. There's not many people that can defend him full court man to man. Yeah, that's a tough matchup for Marinkovic. Uh, just kind of got caught there, maybe extending a little bit too high. But, you know, Serbia is going to play aggressive. That's, that's their style of play. Gooderich so leaving the game now. Good minutes so far played by Gooderich as Dobrich comes back in the Virtus Bologna player. Trying to find Colic Jones. South Sudan still trailing by 10. Jones looking to isolate. Pulls up in the mid-range. Front eye and can't get it. Rebound secured by Milutinov. Serbia so looking to extend that 10 point lead. Jovic kicks out. A little go for that. Tough three pointer. Can't get it. And Mott's going to get fouled. That's going to be the fourth and final team foul against Serbia. And this is good for South Sudan to try and get into the penalty early on. I see there. 
Igor uh, Dmitrovich with a little little shoulder shimmy, and that's you know that's sending a signal as well. I know he's helping him up, but there's a message there. You know, Serbian basketball all about toughness, physicality. Jones got it here on the perimeter. Jock putting the ball on the floor. There's another kick out. He's made one three. Can he get another one again? The South of these plays, the bread and butter is number three, and that's what they keep going to. Yeah, Peter Jacques, uh, you know, a sniper from the three point line, big time scorer at the University of Iowa when he was there. Take a pop here with Jovic. Downloaded Malutinov. All right, missed it. Gets his own rebound, but too big and too strong by Nikola Malutinov. Now, do South Sudan need to double team every time he gets it? Well, you know, it's tough to do anything when it's that deep. That's the third time Serbia's run that play and gotten very deep post seals from their bigs. Nudi Amal looking to attack now. Goes off the backboard. Strong move by Nudi. Keeping this at seven points. South Sudan need to build their confidence. Serbia just need to maintain their focus defensively. Switching on the pick and roll now. Jovic being guided by Nudi Amat. Jovic pulls off in the mid-range. Takes this one. Can't get it. Shy up with a rebound. South Sudan looking to push this one. And that's going to be a charge. Great defense by Stefan Jovic. You knew that one was coming, coach. Yeah, that's a, a nice play there from Jovic. Shaq just a little bit out of control. You'd like to see him jump stop there, get himself under balance before delivering that pass. Jovic, really nice job of stepping in, drawing the charge. Wasted opportunity there for South Sudan to cut it down to a five-point ball game. Up face goes up, and gets the two points. Easy back to a play to again. I think Dobrich has landed awkwardly on his ankle. to see that. Shia caught sleeping there, watching the ball, not seeing his man, Dobrich. Nice job of cutting from the baseline. Well, Peshit's arguing the case. It should have been a foul there, but look at this penetration by Nudi Omad. Just gonna slight little kiss off the glass. That's a confidence he needs to play with. Yeah. Nice high finish there. Milutinov rotating over, but Omad able to extend above him. Well, Pesha's just talking with our referee, Johan Rosso. Shyak down the middle. Tries to go for the step through. Doesn't get the am one, but he'll go to the free throw line. And now, Serbia have put South Sudan in the penalty. The confidence of Shyak, again, currently playing for the main Celtics in the NBA G League. And you gotta think, scouts in the NBA may be looking at his play so far here at the FIBA World Cup. I mean, coach, the sky is the limit with this man. Yeah, Shyak, a really talented player. Uh, you know, watched him play this season with Maine. I think it's uh, impressive, too, seeing him handle some of these point guard duties here at the World Cup. Well, Shyak at the free throw line. Credits to South Sudan right now. More three point field goals than Serbia. They, both teams have taken 11 attempts, but South Sudan have six of those 11. Serbia with five. Serbian fans trying to put him off, but again, it's no good to that because he makes both free throws. Lead still seven points. Serbia trying to extend this to double digits. South Sudan trying to get the stop. More of us. Jovic trying to go for a dump down. And that's what we keep talking about. Anytime he gets the ball in the low block or a dump down, it's, it's only going to be one outcome. Well, that's the fourth time now we've seen that play, looking for the high-low with these deep seals. South Sudan's going to have to figure out a solution to this play. Well, again, making his FIBA World Cup debut right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Danga Kot has arrived. The big man who is the driving force for South Sudan in the FIBA World Cup qualifies. Welcome. Dang a cut to the FIBA World Cup. A lot of talk about this man who was phenomenal in the FIBA World Cup qualifiers, but we've only just seen him now. Well, you know, real solid season with Adelaide and the Australian Professional League. 
uh, really grew up in Australia. So South Sudan able to bring in a lot of talented bigs off that bench. Reed is now back to 10 points. Shot looking for penetration. Again, the double team comes over, no communication. Jovic now, transition, beautiful showtime. Serbia basketball. What a perfect pass from Dobric. Led Jovic perfectly to the layup. It's as you said, coach. Well, that's got to be an illegal screen. What was Denga caught thinking? Just body checked him. And a technical foul is going to be called against Royal Ivy. Sorry, Coach. Go on. Some, some, I was just going to say, some of that frustration, I think, is starting to boil over here. You see that perfect lead pass there. South Sudan's got to be careful. Really been solid up until this point. Got to make sure that this lead doesn't expand. Try to get it under, under double digits into this half. Well, Shia coming out of the game. Well, Bogdan Bogdanovich will shoot the technical foul free throw. So he will get the ball back due to the illegal screen set by Dana A couple of calls that were maybe unbalanced, that we did some few mistakes on so both sides. Down now. But Can you mention frustration playing through a bit of anger, but they need to be collective. They've been great so far in this game, but they don't want this to slip too far away. Now it's a 13-point lead. Yeah, critical moment here for South Sudan. They've stayed competitive for most of this half. Got to make sure that they don't allow Serbia to pull away here. Take it out to Jovic. Dengakot trying to be physical here with Nikola Malutinov. Now they got to the switch on defense. Good defense by Dengakot. That's why he's in there, and that's why he was big for them in the FIBA World Cup African qualifiers. Jones coming off a ball screen. Cross court. Can they make a 7-3 point? You bet they can. South Sudan continue to pile on the pressure. Tremendous pass from Carlick Jones. Diagonal skip to the corner. And Peter Jacques continuing his hot shooting from three. This is 10 points. It's going to be the key thing. Dang has the mismatch. Malutinov getting ready to isolate. Big man dumped out. Finds Jovic. Now the foul's been called. And again, just how easy it is for Serbia to get a post entry and just to get something, even go into the free throw line. Yeah, Milutinov, not just him, Ristich as well. They're bigs from Serbia, able to get some deep seals, causing a lot of problems for South Sudan. Well, the three point percentages right now, South Sudan is shooting 58% from the perimeter. That is impressive. Well, coming into this game, they were the number one three point percentage team at the World Cup, continuing to shoot it at a really high rate. Jovic missed the first free throw. Every superhero has to show signs of being mortal at some points. Here's the second one. 11 point lead to Serbia. 2.19 to go here in the second quarter. If South Sudan win this game, they will qualify. Jones now looking for time and space. Mid-range pulls up, doesn't get it. That's key, he's got to knock those ones down. Jovic kicks out. Bogdanovich left wide open. Can't give him any time and space. Now they got numbers here. Guni Amat, but well, they're going to go for another three. Can they make this number eight? And they had a two on one there. Decided to go for the tray ball. Jovic kicks out. Shoot wide open again. The punishment here from Serbia. The three-pointer in transition. Finally, Dobrich with his first three had been 0 for 10 prior to that one. Big shot there for Serbia. Jones coming off one screen. Now we're on the 10 here. Come on, looking for a handoff. Dang pump fix. Uh, it's going to be a 24 second violation, and again, communication with South Sudanese players needs to be better there. Well, you can see the momentum really shifting. South Sudan had done a nice job of staying within striking distance for most of that half. Over this last two minutes, starting to slip away here a little bit. They need to find some composure, 
even just for this final minute, see, see if they can get a little bit of momentum to head into this half. Well, the one positive South Sudan can take away, they're shooting above 50% from the three-point line. They have more three-pointers in Serbia. But they trail by 14 points. Yeah, and you know, in some ways, that's almost disheartening when you shoot it that well from three, yet you look up at the scoreboard down 14 at the moment. Rinkovic currently on the bench now for Serbia. Jovic in the backcourt, along with Dobrich and Bogdanovic. What good defense by Wild. Surely, Nikola Jovic got away with that one. Three in the quarter by Bogdanovic. South Sudan battling for rebounds. Well, Coach, what do you think of that? Yeah, I think he did get away with one, but uh, you know, Coach Ivy in the bench needs to be careful. Coach Ivy already picking up one technical foul. You know, those reactions are, are what can draw them. So for right now, he's just got to regroup as best he can, try to calm his team down, see if they can find a defensive stop and you know maybe a transition three or a transition play to feel good about something heading into this half. Well, here are some of the key highlights. As we mentioned, seven three-point field goals to South Sudan. And that one did cut it down, but it's still a 14-point deficit. You know, the it's almost like the systemic excellence of this Serbian team. You know, they are just so good on all all ends of the floor. Yeah, absolutely. You saw earlier the fast break point differential. Serbia is so good in the open floor. Uh, that's what's tough for South Sudan. They want to play fast as well. Sometimes you have to be able to execute in the half court, try to slow down the pace of this game. Very difficult to go up and down with the likes of Serbia. And you heard Coach Pesic in that timeout call for diamond three side. Be interesting to see here, diamond set. Maybe with the three-man getting a side pick and roll. Now the interesting scenario today is that if South Sudan loses this game, there is a slight glimmer of hope. They'd have to hope China defeat Puerto Rico. But then it gets even a little bit more confusing based on the map. If China were to win by 35 points, South Sudan wouldn't go through. That's crazy math, isn't it? Well, right now, all South Sudan needs to be thinking about is getting back into this game. They can worry about scenarios after Dang it, caught now, pulls up in the mid-range, takes this one, doesn't get the roll in it. That's a good shot there. Arikovic back in the game, finds Bogdanovic. Pulls up for a quick three and a gap, punishes. Stops you down with the Troika. Yeah, a little, little subtle play there from Carly Jones, uh, you know, telling Dang to wait to inbound until about five seconds had ticked off to make sure they had the last possession. I'm impressed he knew to do that. A lot of times American players don't understand that clock difference, whereas in the NBA, the clock would have stopped there. Jones now will find Dang a caught. That's going to be a 24-second violation at the moment, South Sudan. 24 second violation. I think the players thought he called a foul, maybe. Well, he needs the halftime break to take his players in. Remember, if they win here, they control their own destiny today, but at the moment, it's quite a mountain for them to climb. And they need to be careful here. Already in the bonus, just make sure they're not committing a foul here. Watch for the back picks from the guards. into the first half and Bogdanovich can't capitalize and ladies and gentlemen Serbia have a 17 point leader against South Sudan in their final group game of Group B e at the 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup well South Sudan going through a tough passage of play there in the second quarter coach but you know definitely by the way they have played seven three-point field goals there is a glimmer of hope that they can turn it around well they've shot the ball better than anybody at this tournament so far continuing to do so here but for them, it's about valuing every possession. We saw some stretches there where they took shots they probably wouldn't want. 
The problem with that being that it allows Serbia to get out and run. Serbia, one of the best fast break teams here at this tournament. So South Sudan's gonna have to find that balance between fast and free, but then also executing in the half court. Well, Serbia currently 18 rebounds to 15 from South Sudan. The leading scorer, Bogdan Bogdanovic for 15. Nikola Milutinov has been a driving force inside the paint for the Serbians. Yeah, he has been a load down there. You've seen him on some deep seals on several occasions, giving the South Sudanese bigs some problems. But for me, what really jumps out there, you know, offensively, we saw the 17 assists. That's combined with just four turnovers for Serbia. Well, here are the key players. Colin Jones, only three points where he's been averaging, you know, well over 25 points per game so far in the FIBA World Cup. Five assists, Serbia making life very hard for him. Yeah, no question about that. I think he's actually been a little bit too unselfish so far here in the first half. He's gonna have to be aggressive with his scoring, especially when they're in the half court. Well, now we take a look at the best plays here from the first half. Well, it's been beautiful perimeter shooting from the South Sudanese players. The snipers left, right, and center. Again, they got to keep piling the pressure from the perimeter. The Bogdanovich, kind of full screens now. Look at the dime time. For Russell Kuderich had the three-pointer. That's just how systemic the Serbians have been so far in this game. Yeah, nice finish there from Kuderich. And uh, again, everybody able to come in and contribute for Serbia. Well, Wendy Gabriel kicking this one out in the corner. Kwani Kwani firing the three-pointer from downtown. Well, good defense by the Serbian players, but also converting the South Sudanese turnovers into transition points. Bogdanovic nailing the three-pointer in the corner. Well, you like that pass there from Conic Jones. Remember, he has five assists tonight, Coach. You mentioned maybe he's been a little bit too unselfish. Well, and, you know, it's hard to fault him for making the right play. Uh, you know, we saw that beautiful skip pass there, but I think for them, they need him to be dynamic as a scorer as well, especially in middle pick and roll when they are in the half court. Well, there was the penetration by Nunia Mott. Jovic finding Dobrich on the baseline. Now, Dobrich did well. Sometimes I like to take my dog for a walk, and Dobrich likes to walk inside the key, I guess. Yeah, got away <laughs> with a little one there. Well, our favorite fan of the night, and I think, Coach, it's only right later on we, we get him a Jolly B. But ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in just under 12 minutes for the second half. Whatever our gender, color, belief, or capability, we are all on the same team. We have the power to change lives through basketball. Together, Together we, we are stronger. stronger. No, no matter, matter your, your origin, origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good. Gets rejected. Well, my goodness gracious. Renza Bondo. Just making a stable block there. Fournier, nowhere to go. Nice defense skip, and it's a turnover. El Darwish, that's got to be his third steal. And nice run by his teammates is Zinun. We'll keep adding on to the turnovers, and Wagner just having his way, muscling through. This is turning into a pickup game. It over and here comes the Sosa with a windmill. Wow, that is just a monumental moment. Tominaga, one speed, beating angles, and the block on the board. Your boy Cooks. Cooks gets it back. No one stepping up. Sadia Cooks is in a rich vein of form, carrying on from that. Really good last quarter. Gets it back and Wagner's gone. A miscue and Finland's going the other way. Marking in with the two-hand jam. That's where Gifo needs to be curved. The good hustle to try and stop the errant pass in the over and back. Hey, 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 
Quinones. Quinones all the way. Good ball reversal. Good defensive rotation by the Angolans, but again, Andreas Luis just dissects the defense down.
Welcome back, everybody, to the 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup matchup between Serbia and South Sudan. Well, I'm your commentator, Josh Ben, alongside the great coach, Will Voigt, former 2016 Olympic coach of Nigeria, 2019 FIBA Basel World Cup coach of Angola. I mean, I, I, there's not enough accolades I can give you, coach. I mean, you don't get enough credit. Tomorrow. This is the Will Voigt moment right now, but now Will Voigt is going to break down the first half of this game. Wow, well, uh, I got to make sure my agent pays you for that introduction. <laughs> uh, you know, really uh, seeing what makes Serbia great there in that first half, they do such a good job moving the ball. If they get into the open court, they're so dangerous. And of course, knocking the shots down, Bogdanovic especially breaking out of that shooting slump, coming out here with a tremendous first half. Now, Coach, we've got to think of the crossover for these two teams. I mean, look, there's still a whole half of basketball to go. South Sudan, if they win this game, they will take that second spot potentially, depending on how other results go. But if they lose it, you know, they'll worry about the, I mean, it's very confusing how the mathematics will work, and we can get onto that later, but we got to think potential matchups. The way Serbia's playing, they've got great shooters in the backcourt with Bogdanovic, Stefan Jovic is an ultimate point guard, but Milutunov is just an unbelievable post player. What if this team matches up with Italy? Well, I mean, you know, Serbia has got to be considered one of the favorites uh, here at the World Cup, and, you know, obviously when we get into that next round, we're going to see great matchups across the board. Uh, but, you know, for right now, South Sudan really have to, has to figure out a way to try to control this Serbian offense. Uh, you know, typically they want to play fast just like Serbia. I think in this case they're going to have to adjust their style of play a little bit, find something in a half court that can slow down the tempo of this game, maybe even sprinkle some zone, but they can't try to go up and down with the likes of the Serbia. Now, Coach, I'm always asking you questions because you have the experience. Talk about your Olympic experience, already a FIBA Basketball World Cup experience, Basketball Africa League, Basketball Champions League, the list goes on and on. Before I get to that, of course, use that QR code, ladies and gentlemen, to download the official FIBA Basketball World Cup app to get all the best news, stats, and highlights that matter to you the most. Use that QR code, download the app today now. You know, you have experience with African basketball. This is a different kind of African team because, you know, a lot of these players have learned their basketball education from Australia, United States. If you were coach of this team or, you know, joint coach of Royal Ivy, what would be one thing you'd be collaborating with him to go into the second half with? Well, again, they have to figure out a way to try to slow Serbia down, and that's tricky because offensively they want to be playing quick. They want to shoot early threes, but the problem is these misses are going to lead to runouts just the same with the turnover. So really recognizing when they have number advantages, take advantage of that then. But if they don't, they need to be disciplined. Run something in the half court, make sure Carly Jones has the ball in his hands and see if they can slowly chip away at this lead. Well, Coach, you got to give a message right now to one of your former technical staff members, Nate Lucas. He's been listening to you commentating. Let me tell you right now, he is saying that Will Void is doing a hell of a job here at the FIBA Vassal World Cup. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Nate Lucas, our strength coach uh, on the Angolan national team and now a member of the Qatar national program as well. So great to be hearing from him. Well, now we get the second half underway, of course. This is going to be a tough mountain for South Sudan to climb, but you know, 17 points across two quarters. If they can continue shooting well from the perimeter, defensively tighten up, who knows, maybe they can give themselves a chance. But Carly Jones, only three points so far in the game tonight. Malinov got it by Wenya Gabriel. Double team coming over, cross court. Good ball across by the Serbians. Jovic going for a fadeaway three point. That is as tough as it gets. Yeah, tough kick out there. Jovic with the incredible lean back three from the corner. Now it is officially a 20 point ball game. And of course, it was the eight three pointer for Serbia. Now they have the lead of three pointers. Gabriel pump fakes, goes in the lane, puts up a teardrop, can't get it. Yeah, and we're seeing Gabriel putting it on the deck a lot with these mid-range pull-ups. I don't think that's what South Sudan wants offensively. He's got to recognize his role. And Lutsov goes in, good hands from Wenya Gabriel. What, in the, what would have been his third personal foul. Well, you see Milutinov holding that shoulder after there. I hope, uh, I hope he's okay. Big man, tough as nails, making it to the 2023 EuroLeague Final where they lost to Real Madrid in Konas. Gabriel putting on the pressure, doesn't want to pick up a third foul. 
Boggy going down the lane. Boggy going all the way. Boggy off the backboard, and Boggy getting the two points. And that's that same Gortat screen I talked about before. Miller Tinoff able to seal off the big defender so that he cannot contest at the rim. Boggy going for a quick three. Didn't get the right rotation on that one. Boggy trying. Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich almost losing it. Jovic made that an M1. Troika, Troika, Troika. Well, Mr. Troika finding Jovic. And he'll go to the free throw line here for the four point play. Wow, and how about this young player? Just 20 years old here on the big stage. Had a great shooting game for them in their last game, picking off where he left off. Two big threes to start this half. Well, you are witnessing the future of Serbia and maybe international basketball. Some of the greats that this young man may remind you of. He's got a bit of Stojakovic in him, a little bit of Dejan Bonaroga. Oh, he's got everything. Jones find the penetration, drills the contact, but they're going to call the foul on the ground. Yeah, and I like the aggression from Carly Jones there. I think he's going to have to put this team on his back a little bit, really be aggressive with his scoring. <laughs> Mott here in the paint, pump face, gotta go up with this one. Tony Fowler gets it in the end, it just finds his way to rattle inside. Yeah, nice set there, a little slice action, setting the back pick for the inbounder there. Good finish from Amat. Still a 24 point ball game, Amat trying to take the gamble. Jovic kicking out the boggy. Down low, finds Balutinov, gets rejected. Well, Wedya Gabriel with the rib protection. Finds Luni Amat. Jones had time and space. Takes out the Shyok. He'll try another three. And again, South Sudan going a 5 0 run. Yeah, really nice kick out there from Jones. Had Milutinov on the mismatch there on the perimeter, making the right play once again, kicking it out when the defense collapsed on him. Well, Wed Yun Gabriel. This man is a free agent. But again, Juba Airlines just saying, welcome to the house of South Sudan. But you are not welcome, Mr. Malutinov. Get out of here. Nice little play there. Great ball movement from Serbia. You saw Carly Jones get hit and knocked down. Once there's a man advantage, Serbia is so good at keeping the ball moving. Well, nice little dunk there by Nudia Mott. And now South Sudan just finding a bit of confidence so far. Bogdanovic kicking this one out. Finding Jovic. He doesn't take many three pointers. Can't get this. To love the aggression there from Serbia, fighting for offensive rebounds. Robert just made one three, and again, he talks about him being scoreless in the perimeter. Now he has two three-pointers. Yeah, had been 0 for 10 from three, knocking two down there. They're gonna pull an offensive foul. Interesting decision there, Kelly. Yeah, that's a tough call. The baseline official really shouldn't be the one on that call. The trail official right there, he had nothing on that play. Well, the back to a play by Nunia Mott, throwing that one down the dime, coming from Wendy and Gabriel. Jovic kicking out to another Jovic. Malutinov gets a seal off. Again, every time they go to that high-low play, Balutinov, you know, he has that seal every single time in his bag. Yeah, I mean, this is now the fifth or sixth time we've seen that from them. I think South Sudan's got to think of an adjustment. Instead of playing behind him there, trying to get around into the front. Interesting time now. South Sudan trailing 25 points. Currently still 50% from the perimeter. Serbia have 11 three-pointers, Coach. That is phenomenal. Yeah, so much, so much of those coming off a of beautiful ball movement. 
Jokic trying to kick out, finds Balutinov. Balutinov goes in, and no problem for the big man. Yeah, Serbia uh, really having their way with their pick and roll offense. I think South Sudan's gonna have to make some kind of adjustment there defensively. Bonnie Jones pump fakes. Bonnie Kwani had the three. That's a tough pass to Shyok. Two seconds here. Shyok looking for a penetration. Goes in the lane. A strong penetration goes straight to the rack. Yeah, nice finish there from Shyok. Not afraid to challenge Rutanov there at the rim. Jokic down the middle. Finds Dobrich. He's feeling confidence now, but he's closed out here by Conic Jones. He penetrates, little tear drop, and again, the follow-up by, oh, this is just too easy for Serbia. Yeah, I mean, once again, that pick and roll coverage, they've been in a drop here. Serbia really having their way. Shot thinking about going baseline, pulls up for another three-point. That's too short, but nobody going in for an offensive rebound except for Denga caught. Serbia potentially can make this a 30-point ball game if they go for a three-pointer. That's a kick out, Bogdanovic. Dobrich has made two threes. And again, that is number 12 for Serbia. Now it is officially a 30-point deficit with 4.50 to go here in the third quarter as Royal Ivy calls timeout. Yeah, tough finish here from Shayak, but Dobrich really uh, feeling his way back into this game. Had been 0 for 10 from three prior to now. Definitely has found his confidence, and this is obviously not the start to the half that South Sudan wanted. Let's get more in the floppy, the flash. Floppy was good. More flash. We all right, man. Come on, man. Chip away. Don't let, don't have, don't, hey, don't have your head down. Hey, in the game. One through five, right? One through five. One through five. Come on, man. Chip away, little by little, little by little. Right now. Floppy right now. Hey, Keep playing, bro. Keep playing. Of course, you know, what can we say to the Basel fans, you know, watching across the world? Because, you know, it's more than just getting for the FIBA World Cup. It's also qualification for the Olympics as well. And South Sudan, relatively, you know, with one victory so far, they have a chance to qualify potentially. Well, there'll be a lot of scenarios that are going to play out over these next two games. I think for right now, South Sudan's focus, trying to chip away back into this game. You heard Coach Ivy there in that timeout talk about switching one through five. I think that's a good adjustment from them. They've had a lot of problems with pick and roll from Serbia. Serbian fans coming into the building and join the occasion along with the South Sudanese fans. Well, Nikola Jovic, 20 points today, four for four from Troika land, as they like to say in Serbia. Sunday Detch here in the backcourt. Kwani Kwani off a handoff. Dang a cut. Dang going baseline. Puts up a little floater. And again, nice little response there. And you heard Coach Ivy talk about chipping away at it. That's really got to be the approach. Possession by possession. See if you can get this down to maybe 20. Four minutes here in the third quarter. Bonky could cash and shoot from the perimeter. Can't get this one. The rebound secured by South Sudan. Technically, the South Sudanese team very well coached. Daniel Borg Russell, shot going for the pass. Finds Kwani in the corner. Three is up, no good. Daniel cover the offensive rebound. They go for another three in the corner. And again, a good response there. And make that the eighth three point goal of the game for South Sudan. Yeah, nice job of kicking it out on the offensive rebound and keeping the ball moving. The defense will be scrambling because of the offensive rebound, finding the corner three there. Sounds like that, cutting it back down. 225 points. Jovic has made four threes, and again, this guy is on fire. Troika time with Nikola Jovic. And you are seeing the skill set on display right now. When he's making threes, he is such a tough cover out there with his athleticism and ability to handle the ball. Cross court. We'll go for another one here. Dang it, Cox got to go for the rebound. Almost turning it over. Cox had the three-pointer. 
Takes the deflection. Seven here for Kawani. Kawani. Sunday Dutch pump fakes. Goes in for a one-legged fadeaway. Serbia secure the loose ball. Serbia leading by 28 points. Dushan Ristic. Sunday Dutch with a good interception. South Sudan still showing the poise here. No offensive foul called. Dutch pump fakes. Finds Peter Jockey. He puts up a tough one in the corner. Can't get it. it goes out of bounds, but that will remain Serbian possession. But I like the adjustment here. We're seeing the switching one through five. Dutch able to handle Ristic down there, come away with the steal. I think they needed to show some kind of different look there on the pick and roll. Had some early success here with the switching. Get a return to the backcourt. Here comes the double team from South Sudan. Good defense comes up with it. Dang, now look out below, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to throw it down with a bit of authority. Oh, Gooderich arguing with the referee. And Gooderich is going to get teed up. To South Sudan, a chance to go to the free throw line. Oh, look at this. Double team came. That's what I like to call Ed Juba. Juba Airlines, baby. And Guderich frustrated. He felt that uh, Dang had stepped on the line there. I think he just got to get his composure. You see Bogdanovich there trying to calm him down, make sure he understands the moment being up this big, you don't, you don't want to do anything that's going to suddenly change the momentum of this game. But I like the half-court trap there. I think South Sudan's going to have to find something to change the rhythm of this game. I mean, you may have a case that there's probably a few hits there, but you know, you're up by 20. What, six points now? Just get on with it. That's what Bogdanovich is saying to him. Look, we've got the lead. Why are you still arguing with the referee? Well, I think his argument was that Dang landed on the line, and I think he might have been correct, but to your point, it's exactly that. Everything has been going their way. Let's not do anything that's going to change the momentum of this game. You can totally understand why Gooderich is frustrated, but you know what? As we just said, I don't want to sound like a broken record. Just play basketball. You're playing on one of the greatest teams in the world. South Sudan obviously are going to compete here. They try to go for an interception. Bogdanovich trying to do some wristage from the mid-range. Again, it's just too easy. A clinical shooting display exemplified here, demonstrated by Serbia. Still 27 points of difference. Just finding Dang. Dang force up a tough one. Can't get it. Rebound secured. has a switch. Ristich has the mismatch. Still get the ball to Ristich. Here's Bump Fakes. Turns it right over. Now they have numbers here. But ladies and gentlemen, look out below. And Juba Airlines, baby. Well, if you want to travel to South Sudan, let me tell you, you got to fly one airline, and that's Juba Airlines. Well, Juba Airlines, we have takeoff. You're Captain Dang. You are not landing anytime soon. Dan still competing. Rudy and Mark getting caught for the foul. Well, no, they're going to call it unsportsmanlike against David Kovacs. Wow, coach, break that one down. I felt Nuni Amar would have committed the foul. Well, he, he might have both. I think he has Nuni not potentially on the first one. And then Davidovic after reacting. We'll have to see what they what they say here. But, you know, I really like the switching here from South Sudan. I think it's energized the group a little bit. I think the officials are going to review this potentially. Let's listen to what our referee is going to have to say momentarily. Well, no, I think a timeout's been called by Serbia. And a little bit of momentum here for South Sudan. The switching has been effective for them. It slowed down that Serbian offense, kept them out of rotation, where Serbia is so good at moving the ball, making you scramble around. So I like this adjustment from Coach Ivy. Well, you saw that QR code. If you did, use that QR code, but listen to our referees.
Seven seconds left. South Sudan trailing by 25 points. Now the foul was originally committed by Nuni Ahmad, but then an unsportsmanlike foul, I believe, was called against Davidovats. So two free throws coming up for Davidovats. And you saw the uh, energy tracker there during the timeout. Interesting that Coach Pasic has really shortened his rotation for this game, riding uh, really just seven players with some big minutes, starters especially playing big minutes so far. Davidovac missing the first free throw. <laughs> I love that fan so much. That fan has got to get a reward for that outfit. Basketball's been used for helmets and masks, coach. <laughs> a Puerto Rican fan's going to be in here some point tonight. Yeah, we, we got to get these two guys together for sure. We have to for sure. <laughs> well, one of the greatest coaches in the history of international hoops, Svetislav Pesic, go back to that final. You can watch it on FIBA's YouTube. The former Yugoslavia against Argentina in Indianapolis. Well, Mont makes the first free throw. Chance to cut this down to a 24 point ball game for South Sudan. Makes the second one. Well, due to the unsportsmanlike foul caught against that man, David Dovats. There for Nikola Jovic. I mean, five for five for the perimeter tonight. That is phenomenal. Yeah, and interesting here that South Sudan has the ball. So the unsportsmanlike foul called in a dead ball situation. Would have thought, would have thought we've seen the free throws the other way there. That's very interesting. I thought about that. You know, does it? You know, with the double technical it counts as out, but you know, still a lot for my basketball education. Surely not your case. I mean, you have a basketball line, of course. But a big three pointer there by again by Peter Jock. 21 point deficit. South Sudan have trailed by as many as 30. Wait, turn it over. Now, three seconds here. Finds Nuni Amat, pump fakes, three, corner, got it! Juba Airlines, and now if you want three pointers, we're going Juba Trables. Nuni Amat, big time three pointer, cutting it down to an 18 point ball game. Well, the king of South Sudan. Nunia Martin lays down the throne with a big time three pointer. Yeah, big finish there. A little bit of life now for South Sudan. I think it really started with the adjustment Coach Ivy made defensively, going to that switching one through five, kind of forced his guys to play with a little more energy and heart there defensively. And then that carried over to the offensive end. Let's see if they can carry this momentum out to the start of the fourth quarter. Well, there are your stats so far. South Sudan, 10 three-pointers, but down 18. Serbia's three-point shooting, it has been incredible. 12 for 22. Well, part of what's happened with the switching is it's slowed down the Serbian offense. So instead of all the ball movement you normally see when defenses are in rotation, now they're having to isolate dribble a little bit more than they like. Top plays there in the third quarter. Nikola Jovic hitting his fifth three-pointer. He has a miss on the perimeter. But look at Boggy here. Boggy looking like, you know, a baby Dayan Butteroga there going in the, in the paint, a little hook shot. Yeah, and that was that Gore-Tut screen I've referenced a couple of times. So 
Milutinov able to seal his defender from being able to rotate and stop the ball and pick and roll. Well, the rejection there by Wenya and Gabriel, the big time denial. You like the little teardrop there by Ristich in the lane. Well, I like this play. This was Juba Airlines. Peter Jock with the behind the back pass, finding Dang. And Dang just ripping the ring down. Well, there was the pump fake by Nunia Mott. And he currently plays in the B League in Chinese Taipei and Tai Chung. And those fans, they still believe. Well, there is your QR code to get Courtside 1891. Get all the best streams, schedules, and scores. Courtside 1891, the official platform of FIBA's media platform to watch the 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup. Marinkovic getting called for the foul there. Early first minutes are in the fourth quarter are going to dictate how well South Sudan can try to make a comeback. That's finding a bit of time and space. He can't just play off the mark there. First, just being guided by Dang. Dang is going to get called for the foul, and that's a mismatch. But, you know, credit to Serbia, all the switches and the movement they get on offense. They're able to identify those mismatches. Well, I still think it's the right move. You've got Serbia now focused on trying to play through Ristic in the post. He's more efficient as a pick and pop big, and it changes the rhythm of the offense for them. Now we see them in a 2-3 zone here. Bogdanovic going baseline. Finds David Dovats, and that's just too easy there for the man who got an unsportsmanlike foul at the end of the third quarter. Trying to get a hand up. Good hands on defense by Marinkovic. Don't get caught here. Line to give this one up to Sunday Detch. Detch going for the cross court. 10 three points to South Sudan. Can't make this one 11. Just needing a little bit more there to contest for the offensive boards. Goodrich, step back, three-pointer. Doesn't get this one, but that's going to go over the backboard. Now will be possession back to South Sudan. Yeah, and that's a nice defensive possession there. You saw Dang on the switch, able to front, not allow the ball into Ristich on the post. Now the challenge with Milutinov coming back into the game, obviously a little bit more polished post presence there, so will they be able to continue to have the success with the switching? Dang trying to get the handoff. Time winding down here for South Sudan. Jock pulls up in the mid-range, takes this one right in the face of Nikola Malutinov, and that's a big-time shot. Serbia with the cushion, but again, they had the 30-point lead in the third quarter. And through a bit of frustration, allowed South Sudan to get back in this one. Lutonov here got it by Peter Juk. Gets caught a double team. Finds David Dovats, and again, it was wide open inside the paints. Yeah, they uh, failed to rotate there. Came with the baseline trap, which I like, but then now the weak side defender has to drop down and cover for that man. Nuni Mott off the dribble, handoff, kicks out. Another three in the corner, three is up. And again, it's a good look, but can't capitalize. Bonnie pulls up for a quick three-point, and again, Toika time. That's just been the capital punishment here from Serbia. And what an assassin he is. Feeling the moment for his team. Quick catch and shoot right in the eye of the defender. Well, Dutch turns it over. Serbia have numbers. Jovic may be getting away with a trial, but now Marinkovic for a three-point again. It is Troika time. That's just a confidence blow there for South Sudan. It's not better. Jock goes for a quick three-pointer. Well, I feel like we're watching an NBA game right now. Well, we knew these two teams like to score the ball. We're seeing this tempo here in the fourth quarter, really getting up and down. 24 three-pointers combined total with Serbia and South Sudan. Trying to go to Malutinov. Big man posting up here against Sunday Detch. 
Bogdanovich back to Marikovic. Another one. Are you kidding me? Yes, sir. 15 three-pointers. This is incredible. Yeah, seemingly everybody coming into the game knocking down threes right now. Dash looking to kick out. Finds Juck. Got it by Jovic. Goes baseline. Back to Dinger. Caught it. Juba. L Lions goes up. And he's going to go to the free throw line here for the three point play. And that's an incredible play there from Jock. Normally, just a catch and shoot three pointer. You've got Jovic pressed up, trying to take away that three. Drives baseline, and the great dish there for the finish. Oh, we like to call that the Juba hammer there coming from Dinger Cott. The man who learned his basketball trade, as you mentioned, currently playing in Adelaide in the Australia's NBL. It was one of the key component factors. I mean, South Sudan in the first two windows of the 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup qualifiers. I mean, they were shocking everybody. The first African team to beat Tunisia, I believe, in almost two years at that time. Yeah, I mean, what they did throughout those qualifiers, uh, very impressive. Of course, shocking. I think everyone on the continent coming out of nowhere. You know, back when I was coaching uh, African national teams, South Sudan wasn't even getting to that round of qualification, so we never even saw them in any of the big tournaments. Well, the first time they lost in the FIBA Basa World Cup qualifiers was in the summer of 2022 against Gorgi Jang of Senegal, and that was a very close game. But, you know, even at that point, they lost that one. There was no fear whatsoever, because people were saying, look, you guys cannot not qualify. You're that good right now. You're on a roll, and, you know, at one point, it was just, you know, when is South Sudan going to qualify and make history by getting to the 2023 FIBA Barca World Cup? That was the talk. Yeah, no question. Here they are back into that full court pressure. 1-2-2. Two, two. See if they drop back to a 2-3 zone here or match up. Looks like they're going to go to man here. Jovic penetrate. David Dobats. Can he make this Troika number 16 again? <laughs> Coach, you might need to call the electrician because we have a few lights issues in the Araneta Coliseum. Serbia have shot the lights out. Yeah, incredible shooting here from both teams. A little bit of a defensive breakdown there. Should have been an easy switch for South Sudan, but got lost there. Now Pettichok goes well again. You might need to call the fire department because it's three-pointer number 11 from South Sudan. They are on fire right now. Yeah, an incredible shooting display here from both teams. But if you're South Sudan, you have to find a way to get a stop. You cannot continue to trade baskets here. Well, going baseline here is this three-pointer number 17 for Dobritz. And finally, Serbia cool down. Well, they're going to call an offensive foul. Oh, South Sudan beat Rwanda, Cameroon, Senegal, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Egypt, and the African champions Tunisia on their way to this FIBA Basel World Cup. And again, I'm telling you right now, I am looking forward to the next FIBA Afro Basket. Oh, no, it should be uh, very exciting. You've got Tunisia also kind of in a rebuild, starting to bring in some of their young players as well. So a shifting of the guard in African basketball. Again, yeah, unable to get this one. Well, that is going to be the first team foul, or fourth team foul against Serbia, excuse me. Checking into the game, first time here for South Sudan. Malawatch goes for a three-pointer, can't get it. And he can make those. The young 16-year-old, incredibly skilled for a young player of his size. 4.30 to go, Serbia leading by 23 points. Lutsov spinning baseline, blocking foul is gonna be called against Pedajak. 4.1 left on the shot clock. Yeah, and Jock needs to be patient there. He's got to know they're coming with a baseline trap, so he's going to have help. Really no reason to foul. Down to Dovas is wide open. 
Goodrich thought about going for the three-point up. Serbia 55% from the three-point line. That goes out of bounds. Just seven seconds here on the shot clock. Loosen up finding Jovic. Jovic step back, three is up, can't get it. Malutinov on another offensive board, and another foul is going to be committed. That's going to be the third team foul against South Sudan. Well, baseline ball to Serbia now, 404 to go. Six seconds here, Jovic going all the way, avoids the block and a tough move there by Stefan Jovic. Wow, what a finish there from Jovic over the outstanding arm there from Malawac, and that is a long defender to score over. Malawac offensive board, can't get it again, the defensive presence of Serbia, making it very tough for South Sudan. Goodrich down the middle, goes in with the Euro step, and he gets the M1, and he'll go to the free throw line. He's had a tough night here, of course, picking up that technical foul, but Finish here on a positive note. Yeah, nice finish there from Guric. Serbia able to get back into that open court where they're so good. Yeah, nice little Euro step there. Going back to his right, which is challenging. Left left-handed player there. Nice finish in the and the foul. Well, Serbia's victory here tonight. We'll see the matchup with the Italians. We're still yet to find out who will finish in second place in this group. It could actually be any of the three of Puerto Rico, South Sudan, or China, depending how results go. We'll mention that in the buildup to Puerto Rico's game against China later on. We're looking for a handoff now. Make contact here. Kwani Kwani just checking in. Three is up, no good. Going for the cross court. Another foul here is Marikovic. We'll go to the free throw line for two shots. Yeah, and Serbia once again able to get out and run off the miss from South Sudan. South Sudan needs to stay disciplined here. Point differential will come into play in this tournament. So even though you may feel out of this game, every possession will matter. Well, big free throws here. Chance to make this again a 30-point ball game. It's credit to South Sudan. They come here, they competed, but you know, it's just fair to say that they're still in the early years of building their national team identity. They've done a great job. They are putting their name out in the world of international basketball, but they're up against a powerhouse of FIBA World Cup basketball. Well, this team from Serbia, I feel, is playing as well as anybody. You know, maybe Canada would have an argument there, but this offense is high powered. They do such a good job sharing the ball. Everybody able to come in and contribute. Tall task for anybody to beat them right now. Sunday Detch going back door. South Sudan, no more fouls to give, as do Serbia. Marikovic, another three pointer. Just going cold now, but again, Serbia. They have shot 53% from the perimeter this evening. Trying to go to that ball screen. Again, Detch pump fakes. Marikovic went for the block shot, but... Yeah, you always hold your breath when you see something like that. Really nice cut and pass there. Madut able to find Dech. Nice baseline cut. Got Marinkovic up in the air here. That scary landing. I'm glad he was able to get his hands underneath him there. Well, that looks painful. That looks very painful. Well, Detch missed the free throw. 
You know, a lot of promise and potential for South Sudan going forward with the leadership of Luau Dang, of course, with the help of his brother, Ajudang. And with Coach Royal Ivy, I mean, this is going to be exciting to see how this national team progresses in the future. Well, they have, you know, two big games coming up and still a chance to get out of this group. So obviously disappointed with today's game, but lots of important basketball still ahead of them. And the dude almost coming up with a steal. Finds Goodrich. It's just getting this one to post. Our coach, the penetration. And the shot clock, but that's going to be a 24-second violation. 2.05 to go here in the fourth. Nice defensive possession there from South Sudan, and you got to admire the fight. Some of their bench players in the game right now continue to battle here against Serbia. I'm actually looking for a handoff. Madhu goes to the three. Three is up, no good, but falls into the hands of Nuni Amat. Not trying to find a spacing. Gant just gets it to drop. Running it down to a 26 point deficit. Uh, Simonic down there. Didn't see what happened. Uh, looks like he got a little elbow there. Maybe, maybe the wind knocked out of him. Well, excellent job there by Nuni Mott being in the right place at the right time. I think the officials may review this actually. Yeah, it looks like they're going to take a look at this. Normal speed, please. Again, the same, but normal speed to see if the elbow. Okay, we have a forearm horizontal. So it's unsportsmanlike for number one. Excessive contact, what is your opinion? Is it a normal basketball play? For you, it's a normal basketball play. Okay, scale 10 to 10. Okay, it's not abuse. We don't have 1,000 seconds. We remain with uh, like this. Is this okay for you? Okay. After review, we remain like this without any act of violence. Let's go. So no basket. Basket has been canceled. Well, definitely there was a bit of an elbow that was kind of pinched out there towards Simadic. But at this point, the game is very much going in one way. But it's not, of course, what we want to see here. You know, Nuni Ahmad is not really that kind of player. You know, it's it's kind of it's a reckless act, but I don't think there's too much intention behind it. Yeah, you saw him go over after. I, I, I think he extended it a little bit more than what what he had intended. I'm sure uh, apologies were made. Well, Nuni Ahmad, of course, one of the finest professionals currently playing in the P-League. Mary Kovic, very much a delay call there. Well, fourth personal foul called against Kawani Kawani. As Mary Kovic will go to the free throw line. Serbia 10 and 13 for the free throw line. South Sudan 10 to 16. But you know, the key difference has been the three-point shooting from Serbia has been phenomenal this evening. Yeah, they've really shot the lots, lights out. 16 threes on the game. So many of them coming off a beautiful ball movement, though. In the first half, it was getting South Sudan in rotation, finding the open man. Second half, a little bit more out of transition. But, you know, they do such a great job sharing the ball. Change coming into the game now for Serbia. Davidovac is back in Samanic. Still looks a little bit shaken up there when he took the elbow. Under 90 seconds to go. Serbia going to clean sweep this group and probably meet up with Italy in the crossover. 
Kalani avoiding the black, excuse me, the backboard. Now Nikola Jovic is going to finish this one in a little bit of a showtime there again from Serbia. Yeah, again, Serbia able to get out and run. So dangerous in the open court. And there's still be a way for South Sudan to qualify for the round of for the crossover. Sunday Dutch goes to three in the corner, but they'll have to hope China pull off a victory against Puerto Rico. But even then, if China are to win by 35 points, China would actually take that second place. But we will get into that when we get to the game against Puerto Rico later on this evening. That tips off at 8 p.m. later tonight here, local time. So managing the penetration. Is on the ground, so he will go to the free throw line. That's good, Rich, excuse me. And you see there, Carly Jones sitting really a large part of this second half. I'm sure he's disappointed with his performance today. Sunday Detch now, currently with the ball in his hands. Dang it, caught now down the lane. Listen to this one. A little bit of time between game clock and shot clock here. Nikola Jovic, I mean, Coach Ugly has been the MVP in this game for Serbia. He has been phenomenal. Another three point. That's the final one for Ristic. The final Troika. Makes it now officially a 32-point ball game here for Serbia. Malowatch tries a three and again can't get this one. Ladies and gentlemen, Serbia, they're going to top this group of the 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup with a big victory, 115-83 to against South Sudan. Well, first job done here for Coach Fenislav Pesic, top of the group. Next job for them is going to be taking on the Italians in the crossover. A big performance from these players collectively, but again, Serbia, 17 for 32 from the perimeter. The exact same amount as the Italians last night against the Philippines. Yeah, I mean, an incredible shooting display. Bogdan Bogdanovic uh, really snapping out of his slump, going six for nine from three. But to me, the assists to turnovers, 34 assists to just nine turnovers, beautiful ball movement throughout that game. This Serbian team looking as good as anybody right now in the World Cup. Well, there you can see Bogdanovic shaking hands with the Serbian players. A big performance from his team. South Sudan, not all over though. They will be watching the game later between China and Puerto Rico. But Serbia know their fate. They've got to take on the Italians in the crossover. Serbia team, again, these players representing teams from the NBA, the Basketball Champions League, and the EuroLeague coming here collectively to do the job together. While South Sudan, G League players, Australian NBL players, European players as well, they've done their job. They've got one victory, but they need to wait as destiny does not lie in their hands unless China can get a victory against Puerto Rico. South Sudan, third. I mean, anytime you make 13 three points, you expect to be close within the game. Well, that Serbian offense just so high powered right now. Can anybody stop them? Certainly, when they shoot the ball as well as they as well as they did today, going to be a tough cover for anybody. Well, there are your top scorers: Nikola Jovic, 25 points, followed up by Bogdan Bogdanovic, 23. Nikola Milutinov with 17. But a phenomenal performance here from. Serbia, South Sudan, very spirited. Nudiamad had a very good game, of course, but you'd expect him to get near 17 points. But here are the top plays from the fourth quarter. Well, Bogdanovic 
Trying to play that if he gets a little bit of time and space. Going baseline here with a penetration. Additional finding David Dovats. Well, there was Peter Jock there coming off the hand up. But, you know, you talk about his time in college, he is playing with a lot of confidence with his shot here at the FIBA Basel World Cup. Well, Peter Jacques, you know, big time scorer at the University of Iowa, has gone on and played in France, and, you know, really known as a catch and shoot player, has shot the ball really well from three this entire tournament, but showed uh, an ability to put it on the deck as well here. Well, there was a three pointer by Marikovic. So be a three point shooting again. It just exemplified the very definition of excellence. You know, 13 three pointers from the South Sudanese team. I like this with Peter Jock going baseline, dishing off, and dang it, call with a throw down. Yeah, a great dish there from Jock, again showing his versatility. Uh, you know, interesting for me in this game, Serbia shrinking their rotation down. Uh, you know, Pesic showing how important this game was and, and that he was not underestimating the ability of the South Sudan team. Nice perimeter shooting for both these two teams, but in the end, it was Serbia's excellent execution on offense and even on the defensive end, converting South Sudanese turnovers into transition points. Miami Heat rookie Nikola Jovic with a phenomenal performance yet again here at the 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup. We'll take a look at the standings. Serbia have come here as expected, sweeping this group and finishing in top spot. Now, depending how the game goes between China and Puerto Rico, we could see any of those three teams finish in any of those positions. But if Puerto Rico wins, they will automatically go to two and one and they'll take second. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for joining us here in the Aranetta Coliseum. A later game will take place at eight o'clock local time. But for now, it's goodbye and we'll see you soon.